Welcome to Not PMQs, uh, where we've got such an exciting show that I, I actually can't contain myself because uh, it looks like the French might be having uh, another revolution, uh, hopefully, of some kind. Maybe not the full type, but where they chop heads off, but something like that. Uh, joining us uh, to talk about this, we've got uh, John Mullen, uh, who's... Well you're, in, you're in Paris, aren't you, John? Yeah, yeah, just outside Paris at home, yeah. Uh, and also uh, joining us, I'm just going to bring him on to the chat, is uh, Daniel Arty, who has been on the show before. Um, Daniel is a teacher. Are you, are you in your lunch break, Daniel? Just after, but I take a, another break uh, in a quiet room in my high school. <laughs> OK, well, we won't tell anyone. Um, that, that, that you're, 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 you're what you're doing. Um, and we, we're looking to see if we can get Jane Lee on as well. Um, but she's having a bit of a problem with her video. Jane, can yeah. you hear me? You're yes, there. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. We can't see you yet, but if you if you can manage to um, be seen, that would be, we'll, okay. we'll just we'll just hear you for now. Okay. Now, um, the French, uh, the French election that has um, taken uh, everyone's attention in the past uh, few days. Uh, we had a result on Sunday, which which I'll I'll just show us a, a screen on, um, which is which is this this result, which was which shows that um, fifty two percent didn't vote, uh, and then the the alliance led by Mélenchon, slightly ahead of the alliance led by Macron. Um, however, um, it has been pointed out that uh, in the actual results shown by the government or the state, it was the other way around. Um, can, I, can I ask you what your, what your thoughts are on, on this clip as, uh, that we've got of... Um, of uh, Mel and Sean talking about the, the results here. Sur ce que fait au juste Monsieur Darmanin avec les résultats. Je, avant hier soir, je n'y aurais pas pensé, mais je pense que il va falloir reconsidérer. Et si nous l'emportons, je pense qu'il faudra que on en tire des conclusions. C'est plus possible qu'un ministre de l'Intérieur puisse refuser une étiquette euh, comme il l'a refusé pour nous la nuit. Puis il a fallu que soit le tribunal qui l'oblige à le mettre puis euh, manipule des résultats en reclassant les gens en cours de route. Alors, euh, tout ça pour essayer de créer une illusion, mais je pense qu'il n'y a personne, tout le monde comprend que c'est les mauvais perdants, mauvais joueurs. Mais là, ce n'est pas un jeu, c'est juste notre démocratie. Donc, on ne peut pas avoir comme ça des mœurs de république bananière euh, en France. Yeah, so, so he's uh, criticizing the government for two things. Uh, uh, first of all, they actually refused, uh, in the, in the, on the ballot forms, they refused to have the name of the left alliance on the ballot forms and that they were finally obliged to uh, to announce the results naming the the left alliance and the, we had to go to the courts to oblige them not to pretend that the alliance didn't exist just to confuse voters that was the, the first thing they were aiming to do and the second thing that the government did is that they they recalculated the the results uh, and uh, a couple of uh, uh, candidates who were support uh, actively supported by the left alliance but for one or two complex reasons were not actually members had not actually signed up they said oh we're not counting them so we're saying that the left got zero votes in that town because he didn't have the right label and this allowed them to have on the national television macron's alliance is ahead even though le monde and good for them told the truth and said no the left alliance is slightly ahead So, so I was muted. So the government, the government actually fiddled in a way the figures. Uh, we've got YouGov doing that over here, um, but the government's figures were, were skewed in order to make it look like Macron was leading. So that's that's a, that's a terrible uh, situation. I mean, has that been? Has pe have people been making a lot of protest about that? Well, it shows that it shows that uh, come come in whenever you feel like it, Daniel. It shows that that Macron supporters are panicking. 
Uh, and all this week, we've had loads of uh, of Macron supporters saying, you know, it's going to be like North Korea if Mélenchon wins, and uh, and uh, they're just as bad as each other. The uh, the Le Pen and Mélenchon, they're just the same, and Mélenchon's a great friend of of Putin's. Any old lie will do, you know. And the most recent one is uh, he was seen with Jeremy Corbyn, and we all know that Jeremy Corbyn hates Jews. You know the old classic uh, lies that they they do when they're panicking because they have. Uh, so much uh, influence on the media, they can get away with it, or they can at least make some progress with it. Yeah, I mean, you can see this. This is in the uh, Daily Telegraph report from Paris saying that the, the Mac Macron candidate is saying um, uh, that uh, there were candidates, including one I'm fighting against, who thought it a good idea to invite Jeremy Corbyn, who is anti-Semitic and pro-Assad. Um, so, Dan Daniel, are, are you are you noticing a lot of dirty tricks going on then? Mm, sorry, what? Are you noticing uh, lots of... Yeah, well, uh, as said, John, uh, we are a lot of people to see the problem. What I can just answer from uh, the activists that um, it seems the dynamic is still good for the left. It's incredible uh, in my areas how many people are during this week active to go to speak to people to do the most the, the as much as possible to to win anyway so, so with the this two ballot thing so the first ballot over 50 percent of people didn't turn out to vote um is that because they hold their fire for the second one or is it generally that they are apathetic it's neither, really. <laughs> uh, it's it's a lot to do with them um, thinking that many people on the, who because uh, the the program of Mélenchon is very popular. Uh, Eighty eight percent of people think yes, we should have a major rise in the minimum wage and blocking the prices of water and electricity. It's about seventy or eighty percent of the population who agrees with that. So there's a lot of support for the 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 reforms that uh, that we'd like to to bring in. But after the presidential elections, there's a whole dynamic of uh, well, it's over now. He's the president, and you get some people in the middle saying he's the president, give him a chance. Uh, but others say, well, hey, you know, well, we can't win, and now he's the president. Uh, and so, you know, we 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 obviously we hope that a huge number of, of people who didn't vote in the first round will vote in the second round. It's very hard to say uh, if that will happen or not. But we're certainly going to do as much as we can. But it, it looks almost certain that it looks very likely that Macron will lose his overall majority. Uh, now, of course, we'd like a left majority, but that is an uphill struggle, it has to be said. And that's what we're fighting for. But, you know, uh, uh, five years ago, I would, well, Daniel will be telling you about that. Five years ago, the left had very bad results. Uh, and with the, the results are going to be incredibly, uh, 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 incomparably better this time. I think you have the figures on that, Daniel. Yes, um, I made some uh, calcul about really comparing the results of 2017 and 2022. And uh, when you make the addition of the left, uh, which is now much more united, uh, we won, we are winning 9% more. The center, like Macron and some uh, parties uh, allied with him, lost 8%. The right wing lost 5.5%. And the far right win almost 10%. So that's really uh, giving a landscape that uh, I said, John, to answer to your question about how people will mobilize. I can testimony around me, some left people that said, oh my God, I forgot to vote last Sunday and I will do it next one. So there will be some reaction interesting from that way and a dynamic but uh we we it's it also we have to understand that this uh, electoral system for the legislative the election of the parliament is really complicated uh, the candidates are in local area that are really bureaucratic 
are not corresponding to any um, all day uh, areas like the commune, the district. It's uh, artificial right. uh, the, 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 um, uh, way to, uh, it's very complicated for people to understand well, why, why here I'm voting for suit one? Oh no, you are in the other side of the street. So, so, so we have a many, a lot of difficulties. And uh, anyway, the uni unification of the left is really working and giving hope and uh, challenging, as uh, Crispin, you said, the apathic, um, Apathy, yeah. Habit of so many people that say, anyway, it's always the same. And yeah. really, we are a minority more united, also in a more leftist uh, point to argue to people and say, hey, something is happening. Let's do it. Yeah. So I might well, just bring I just to in. add that the, uh, yeah. that the, the, the program that the, the left MPs are going to be elected on this time, for most of them, is far to the left of the one that they were defending five years ago. Right. Um, Jane, oh. sorry, we, we can't see you because your camera's not working, but do you want to come in now? Are you there, Jane? I think we should be. Uh... Oh, no, sorry, Jane. Oh, sorry, are you all oh, right? Sorry, I, I, my, my mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you hear me now? I can. Yeah. Do you want to add anything that you've picked up about about the? I do. The, I do really. I think. Um. I. I mean. I think. Uh, Daniel is and John are, are absolutely right. I mean, there is this sense of a, a latent vote still out there, um, that um, you know, could uh, change things. And uh, I think Manuel Bompa, for instance, who's been um, doing a lot in the campaign, uh, has. Um, uh, has spoken about the youngest voters who actually, um, you know, have have t had tend to think of politics as something for the street and the web rather than for for the assembly. Um, that the excitement over the change that Danielle talked about, um, you know, could bring that lot of voters in the way it brought in young voters to Jeremy Corbyn's campaign. Um, but also, I think that there are people like. Um, Oh, what's his name? Adrien, um, Adrien Catanon in Lille. Um, if, you, if you think of in the country that, you know, like uh, Marine Le Pen's um, uh, stronghold is in the north, in the, in the North Pas de Calais. Um, uh, but but uh, Adrien Catanon, in, in, uh, who's just won, you know, by 20% points over, over the, uh, the ensemble, is, is, you know, the noops there have won in Lille. I mean, this is the center, uh, really, for that um, La France Flamande. And, um, and he, uh, he uh, there are, uh, I think, and there is an understanding because I'm quite near it because I live in Kent, <laughs> so I'm quite near the North Pas de Calais, and I have known I worked there, um, and I know that there are people in Dunkirk and Calais and that whole area um, who are uh, one would say uh, fasche, not fasho, you know, like people who have joined the Le Pen party because they're pissed off not because they're necessarily fascists. Um, uh, I mean, one of my friends in, in the, in the Nord Pas de Calais is Jum Saïd, who is a filmmaker. Um, and he, he, is, he has talked to me about this frequently that, you know, it's not only fascists in Le Pen's party. Now, the, the, uh, the ensemble, you know, the, uh, Ma the Macron, Macron's party, their, their, their latest diktat that they're trying to dis the um, dictum, I mean, that they're trying to dis to dissuade people from uh, voting for Mélenchon's side, uh, is that the left wing is not that far from the right wing. That is to say that the populist left wing and the populist right wing 
are in a sense alike. Well, the thing is, you, you know, to sup with that devil, you do need a long spoon. Um, and, you know, you don't want to go anywhere near the fascists in that party. But on the other hand, in terms of pensions, in terms of a rise in the, in the level of unemployment benefit, in the terms of, of um, HLM, you know, uh, social housing, um, there, that those at a local level, those Le Penistes have been talking about this, you see. So, so you know, you, you could recognize that they're, that they're in the, that, that dictum of the, of the, um, uh, of Macron's party could actually work the wrong way for them, if, if you see what I mean, if it was handled very carefully, because you are supping with the devil, I mean, and that has to be avoided. Um, so can I just come in? So can I just ask, you know, is the uh, idea that the centre is is where we should be? Is that losing its ground in France? Yes. Is that what is yes. that what kind of you yes. agree yes. that yes. that? That the Macron centre ground is just not popular with people. Is well, that I think I think it has identified itself as not central but right in that, um, as the needs have been of the people have been more have been more recognised. And I think that there are certain things that have happened just in the last week that uh, in SN, for instance, that just show like um, Born, you know, the new prime minister. She's made some. Um, uh, new um, uh, appointments and um, and those appointments, many of them are kind of like young, administrative, quite right wing people who supported or were interns to Valerie Pécresse, um, Pécresse, who you know, who's who's sort of the right part of the party, and um, and they. Uh, and and that that in itself is being talked about in the newspaper. For instance, I mean, there was this what's her name, uh, Amalie de uh, Mont. Oh, I can't remember her name. I wrote it down because I always forget these things. Amélie de Montchelin, um, who, uh, do, do you know about this, Danielle? You're nodding. Yes, I mean, she's she's such a bese bese, you know, kind of horrible person, frightful woman. Um, and um, and she, uh, I mean, Sorbonne and Harvard Administrative School, you know, and she comes in into the into the cabinet and the first thing she does she goes into the newspapers and she uh, she accuses her um uh, uh, Jerome Gaudi um her her left wing opponent um uh, who beat her in the first round you know tr trounced her really um in the first round of, of anti-semitism i mean you know immediately mm -hmm. of being yeah of being an anarchist and an anti-Semite. And of course, Jerome turns around and says, well, my local Jewish people gave me an award for all the help I'd given them. And, you know, your own government in the last, the last um, government asked me to lead a commission on helping out the elderly people. How should we do it? So if I'm a wild man and an anarchist, it's a weird thing that they asked me to do. Huh? So anyway, that that's so it, it sounds like there's a lot of fear of this. So they're coming out with some smears, which we, we saw in 2017. Um, and I just but we, we haven't got that much time. But I wanted to play uh, another a, a clip uh, of Melanchon in a rally uh, last night. It, this is how topical we are on this show uh, in um, in Toulouse. Uh, maybe you can translate for us, uh, both, all of you. <laughs> donc cherche sans cesse à maîtriser le temps long par le temps court. Le temps long, c'est celui... Yeah, he's saying that, that capitalism prioritizes short time, that short term profits, that's what counts. Alors, quand nous nous parlons de planification écologique... Uh, but le... we're going to talk about green planning, which is to make the longer, the longer term uh, more of a priority over the short term. Ça veut dire que le modèle économique qui est le nôtre est un modèle qui cherche Accorder les rythmes de la production et de la nature. Yeah, we want the, the rhythms of nature and the rhythms of production to go at the same speed to be matched. Pas à travailler sur un statut professionnel avant 16 ans, fin de l'obligation scolaire ou 18 ans, ce qui est notre but à nous. Yeah, we we don't want people to start work at 14 as, as apprentices. As apprentices, we want uh, people to finish their education uh, and be able to finish their education uh, without being short of money. Le temps, matière première invisible. Et cette nationalisation 
So we're, in a way, we're going to nationalize time. We're going to introduce planning into the idea of time. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna, we're not planning to wreck the environment. We're planning to uh, we're planning to repair it. And I mean, this matches up with the very green side of, of Melanchon's program is that move to 100% renewable energy, 100% organic farming. Uh, whereas uh, Macron, with these right wing people, he's really already planned. You know, students are going to pay high fees, which they never have in France. Um, the the retirement at 65 and all that he's he's got it already so if, if macron gets his majority certainly he's got a big uh, big plans for for wrecking our society well so it, i mean that kind of uh, agenda that he's setting is so different to what we've got um in this country it's um incredible he could talk about nationalization i mean that word's such a dirty word here. Is, is, is Dan, Danielle, is, is, are you up for, is nationalization doesn't have, does it have a healthy uh, connotation in France? Yes, when you explain, people are really uh, for that kind of changement. And what is interesting is in 2017, uh, Mélenchon had to kill the Parti Socialiste. And he did. And since five years later, now we warn that the left is really more strong and powerful, as you said so much. And even in the Parti Socialiste, some of the more right wing people are leaving. And in the local areas, we have nice discussion between activists about how to build a real deep alternative. Uh, I would like to say something. Uh, as said uh, the Jane from Lyon, uh, if I remember, uh, that it's absolutely true that Macron wanted to say, I am in the center. And now it's more clear for people that they are right wing. And uh, even if, you know, usually uh, after the presidential, uh, for electing the parliament, always the people do uh, follow the results and give majority to the winner. And that time is uh, look is evident that it's a real important crisis for Macron, and he will be perhaps without uh, absolute majority for his party, and he will have to make agreement with the right wing. So uh, that is uh, interesting in terms of clarification. And also, last I conclude with that, that um, when you compare 2017 and 2022, uh, in 2017, the majority of the second, second turn um, fight were um, the center against the right. And it, like it was 2034 on 500. This time it's only 20. And the majority of the fight in the second term are 2067. 267. Legs left against the center. So, wow. It, we, we have a real chance to have at minimum many more candidates that will be elected. And we don't know if we can still hope having a majority, but in right. any, a, any way, it will be more difficult for Macron to make what he wants. Right, now um, look, we're gonna to have to wrap this up, but John, I'll, I'll come back to you now. Do, do you have anything else you, you want to add to what's been said and then uh, to finish this discussion? Well, uh, uh, there's a lot of, obviously lots of discussion on the left about how best to, to make change, uh, uh, elections, strikes, revolutions, streets, uh, and so on. But Mélenchon said what he's putting forward is a program for spectacular change. And the whole of the left, whatever their other priorities, should be right inside this movement for spectacular change. And the debates will continue about how far you can go with elections, the importance of mass movements, there's only many debates to continue, but this is where it's at, is this movement for spectacular change.
Well, we're, we're all excited over here, da Daniel. Uh, good luck uh, in the campaign and John as well. Can, can we maybe hear from you next week what, what, when, when we get the results? Would you be up? No to doubt. Know? And Jane, maybe we can get you on camera. I am really sorry about this. I'm <laughs> going to take it to it the can That's all right. No, no, no worries. <laughs> We'll see you, see you soon. Good luck again, uh, but everyone, uh, and uh, hope, let's hope for a, a positive result. Thank you. Thank you both.